Hey, pilots! Drain Man here, and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, I am going to show you how to save some money. And the reason why is because sometimes we blow up our flight controllers for no good reason, and we just toss them out. We try to plug them in, they're not working, we throw them away, and guess what? Now we got to buy a new one. But in this video here, I'm going to show you a very common problem and I'm going to show you how to fix it so you can start saving money. Let's go. All right, pal. So first things first, you got to make sure that you're having the same problem as me or this won't work for you. So I'm going to show you what's happening with me and really what was happening. <laughs> wasn't even intended on making this video. I was building myself a brand new quadcopter, as you can see here. And what happened was is I had taken a nice crash and everything broke but my flight controller. And I know my flight controller wasn't broken because I plugged it into the computer and it was working fine. So I went ahead and built this quadcopter and then when I went to power it up, it wasn't turning on. So now it's what's wrong, right? We start freaking out and oh my God. And <laughs> so here's what's going on. Right now I have my ESC wired up, as you can see, okay? Uh, it, nothing is connected to the air unit at this time. All motors are connected to the ESC and flight controller is connected through this jumper connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the flight controller on here and boom. And then I've got a Pizza Pack 6S, watch me now. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And as you can see, flight controller is not on, but my ESC is. So that means my flight controller is broken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug my flight controller and you can do this too. Get rid of that flight controller, set it aside, grab a new flight controller. This is a brand new one right out of the box. I have the box and package right here. I literally just opened this guy, brand new Fat Tech. I'm gonna plug it in. Now, if this powers up, that means that my ESC is clearly not the problem. The problem is the flight controller, right? So there you go, nothing's changed. All I did was plug in a new flight controller and I'm gonna go ahead and power up. And as you can see, everything is now on and working. I've got LEDs all over my flight controller. Everything's great and nothing's broken. That's fantastic news. That means my flight controller's toast. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this broken one. Now, you may say, well, Drain Man, it's broken. It's toast. Why are you even dealing with it? Well, I'm going to show you why. Let's jump into the PC. All right, pilot. So here in the PC, if I grab a USB connected to the computer and the broken, this is the broken flight controller. These leads right here are just for testing, so ignore those. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. I know you heard that. Jumping into the PC, you'll see right here my COM port's up. I have an option for three and four. I'm gonna choose three and I'm gonna hit connect. And there you go, look at that. I'm connected. I mean, it's gotta be working, right? There's gotta be nothing wrong with this. Well, maybe it's just connecting and it's not working. So I'll head over to data output. And if you look over here, you can see, look, this proves that my microcontroller unit is on, it is uh, communicating to my gyro, and everything is perfectly fine. When I shift this, boo, 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 look at that. So there you go, this is a perfectly good flight controller. It's just not powering up. All right, pilot, so in order to work on this properly and not kill myself or run into new problems, I'm gonna use the Scopey Scope. I got this bad mamba jamba. Now, if you do not have this scope, and that's completely understandable, I will put a link for this one down in the video description, but I'll also put a link to some uh, more affordable ones if you're interested in getting a little scope because you enjoy doing this type of stuff. I know that I do. All right, let's jump in. All right, pilot, so before we get started, I do want to discuss this with you real quick. The chip that you're seeing in the scope at this current moment, that is an STM32F7, 
22. That is your microcontroller unit. In order for us to be able to make this repair, that microcontroller has to be good. I know that that one's good for one reason, and that's because I connected it to the KISS GUI and everything was working. I saw my gyro, I saw my connections, I saw that everything was working. That couldn't happen if this microcontroller unit here was bad. All right, pilots, let's jump into the scope and looking around, I can see diodes everywhere. Here's one, here's one. Actually, there's another one right here. And I'm gonna take a guesstimate and say that it's this one. Okay, fine, I tested it, so I know it's that one. But the reason why it's this one is because look what's nearby. You got that right. This is my positive and negative to power this board, not by USB, to actually power the board. So what I did is I soldered on these two leads here. Here's one and here's the other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my power supply to this board. Every pilot should have a power supply for reasons like this, reasons like testing and powering up a new board, powering up a new drone. Pilots, get a power supply. And if you don't wanna buy one, I'll put some links down in the video description. You can build one. I have an awesome video on how to build your own power supply. I'll put a link for you down in the video description. So let's go ahead and grab this lead here. This is gonna be our power lead. So as you can see, I just connected my power. And here is our ground lead. I'm gonna go ahead and connect our ground. So as you can see, there is our two leads connected, one and two, and let's move back over in frame. All right, so with those two connected, I'm gonna grab my multimeter, which you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, I have displayed it for you, and I'm gonna put my ground on ground, and I'm gonna put my positive on positive. And as you can see, I'm feeding 16.34 volts into this board. If I look at my power supply, I'm at 16.3, so there you go. That is me supplying this board with power. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this ground clip and I'm gonna put my ground on it, and I'm going to check one side of this. Well, there you go. I've got 16.34 volts going into this diode. So that means I should have 16.34 volts coming out of this diode. And if I touch the other side, what do we have? We have a micro calculation, 0.88. Come on, guys. 16 to eight, 0.8. Wow, something is seriously wrong with this diode. We found our culprit. If you look here on the screen, you'll see this here is a shot key diode. And this is the one that's giving us trouble. And I know that because I looked it up. Now you can go onto a website like this and you can purchase some. You can probably get a handful of them. They're probably pennies. You are about to throw this out for pennies. Not pennies, pennies. You're about to throw this out for pennies. So let's go ahead and pull out a donor board. I'm not even gonna spend a penny. I'm gonna use a broken FedTech flight controller. I'm gonna pull that shot key diode off and I'm gonna put it on this board. What we're gonna do is we'll disconnect this board. Boomity boom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. I'll put on another board. Watch this, here's one right here. This one actually has a bad microcontroller unit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna power it up. Let's get it powered. So I'll put ground in. Boom, and I will put power on, boom. Okay, this board is now powered by the same voltage we just had. And I'll, I'll check to confirm, here we go. Okay, 16.34 coming in, would you agree? Okay, we both agree. All right, so I have my ground, now let's touch this side. What do we got? We got 16.34 coming into the diode. Let's see what's coming out of the diode. 16.3, whoa, well, 16.13. And as we discussed, there is a low forward voltage drop. 
That means that the diode is soaking up a little bit of voltage, but not 16 volts. It should be soaking up just a little bit like you see here, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And if we check the data sheet, I'm sure it would tell us exactly. But what this tells me is that this diode on the other board is bad and this diode on this board is good. So all we need to do now is remove it and put it on the other one. Eee. All right, so let's go ahead and do that together. So I'm going to disconnect all this. I will shut off my multimeter and let's throw the board up that we need to pull from and let's get it placed on here nice and cozy like. Now, that is the culprit diode right there. It needs to be removed, taken out of the way. I probably don't need to work up the heat gun and all of that for this. I probably can do the whole replacement without it, to be honest. But we'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. I'm going to grab my micro tweezers. If we damage this diode taking it off, I mean, I won't necessarily be upset because why? It's broken. It's bad. Who cares? Well, let's place it back down. Now, we want to be careful because we don't want to remove anything else. I probably should put on a smaller tip. If you have a smaller tip, I mean, I would say use it. It can be helpful. But boom, there we go. So that one is off and gone. I don't know where it went. Actually, I got to make sure it didn't fall onto the board. Gosh, those things are small. All right, well... I'm glad it's gone, and now we can clean this up and prepare for the new one. The question we have now is, how do we want to install the new one? Do we want to install it by heat gun, or do you guys want to install it by soldering iron? All right, so we just cleaned both those pads. I'm going to grab a little bit of solder wick, and let's clean this up. Boom. And boom, look at that. Fresh, clean pads, huh? I know you like that. All right, we're done with our solder wick. And we're actually done with that board for now. Let's put the other board on. And we need to remove this diode without damaging it. Okay, so I just powered up my other soldering iron, and it's not a whole different iron. It's just a different tip. It actually plugs into my machine. I have the FX 951. It is a phenomenal soldering iron. It's probably the only one you'll ever have to purchase in your life if you buy that one. So look at this. This is called the pencil tip. It is the 2032, and look at this guy. <laughs> Look at that, micro. So I personally love it. I use it in situations like this. If you're interested in getting this or having one of these, I'll put a link for you down in the video description. All right, let's grab some tweezers. And if any of the components that I'm using today you're curious about, hit in the comments and I'll hit you up with a link, all right? All right, let's go ahead and move forward. Sorry if it's moving around, I have to put my eyes on there. So there we go. So we're gonna heat that up, okay ever so gently okay 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 there it is I got it all right let's head over to the other one without dropping this Ooh, I'm nervous I cannot express how important it is that this is put on in the right direction. It is a diode. It only allows the flow of current in one direction. So if you install it backwards, you're gonna be in hot water. To give you guys, ow, I touched my soldering iron with my elbow. Okay, pad one down. And I honestly want to just do one pad at the moment. Flip it up right. Okay, so as you can see, it's backwards. See how the line is on the right side? We need the line on the left side. This thing is just itching to jump away from me. What a tiny component. Oh, Lordy. Okay, so there you go. So now that it's placed in place, we just need to heat her up. Get my tweezers in there. Oh. Come on now, don't do this to me. There we go. 
There we go, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is fun. I don't know why I love this stuff. All right, now we'll use our soldering iron and some fresh solder, and we'll hit the other side. Boom, look at that, huh? So here's what we'll do. I'll grab a little Q-tip. Now, I don't use regular Q-tips. I use the microfiber ones. It's not actual cotton, but that's just my preference. And let's get in here and clean this up. And this way we can check our connections, make sure we're happy with everything, and we'll power it up and test it. Let's go ahead and turn on our multimeter. Okay, multimeter's on. All right, so let's connect our ground. And we will now connect our positive, because I am positive. So let's go ahead and take a reading just to make sure everything's up and working. There you go, 16.34, right? Remember that number? Okay, here we go, ground and this side. 16.34, okay, so we know that it's going in, but is it coming out? <gasps> oh my God, Becky, yes sir. <laughs> All right. So before we were getting a messed up reading like 0.8 or something like that. And as you can see now, we're getting 16.05, which is about 0.3 of forward voltage drop, which is expected. So seems like we're rocking and rolling. All right, let's put away the scopey scope. All right, pilot, so now that our board is fixed, we're gonna find out for sure. I mean, we te well, we know the diode's fixed, but let's find out if the actual board is fixed. And we're gonna find out together. You'll see here, this is my vise that I've used. This is the donor board. This is the board that we just pulled the diode off of. I'm not sure if you can see that far, but it's missing. And on here, the diode is right there. That's the new one per se. We just took this diode from this board. This one's fried anyways. This one has a bad MCU. That's this uh, chip right here. This one is now hopefully repaired. So let's go ahead and remove it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to simply plug it into the drone and test because that's all I'm trying to do is finish my drone without paying for this brand new expensive flight controller. I mean, I paid for it and I'll use it on another build, but I don't want to throw out a $90, $85 flight controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in for testing and we're going to find out. We're going to find out if we fix it right now right here together so plugging it in uh, boom and I'm gonna set it up here boom no smoke stopper because I am gonna live on the edge and here we go <laughs> get some daddy get some daddy your boy be doing his thing huh spear fingers <laughs> yeah, that is so awesome. I just took a broken flight controller and fixed it for zero dollars with another broken flight controller. <laughs> I hope that you guys had a good time. I hope that if your flight controller is broken, you'll be able to use this video to fix it. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will see you on the next one.